Step into the shadowy world of infamous serial killers. As twisted minds plotted their sinister deeds, they needed a chilling place to hide their victims. Therefore, curiosity leads us to wonder, where did these twisted individuals stash their unfortunate victims? Behind false walls? Beneath floorboards? Luckily, that's what today's video entails. We'll be exploring the dark recesses where fear dwelled and uncover the disturbing truth about where these famous serial killers stored their victims. Well then, Let's get to it. 1. John Wayne Gacy John Wayne seemed like an ordinary guy, a friendly and outgoing fellow with a knack for entertaining people. Little did anyone know, behind his jovial facade lurked a dark and sinister secret. Gacy had a peculiar fascination with clowns. He delighted in transforming himself into a character named Pogo the Clown, or Patches the Clown. With his colorful makeup, oversized shoes, and playful demeanor, he entertained children and adults alike, bringing smiles to their faces. But no one knew that this cheerful clown harbored a chilling alter ego, a predator hiding in plain sight. Deep within the walls of his unassuming ranch-style house in Norwood Park Township, Gacy unleashed his evil intentions. He had a twisted and diabolical plan where he would lure unsuspecting victims to his lair, using his charisma and charm to gain their trust. Once inside, he would reveal his dark side. Reports stated that he would convince his victims to don handcuffs, promising them a mind-boggling magic trick. Unfortunately, instead of conjuring rabbits out of hats, he subjected them to unspeakable horrors. Helpless and terrified, these poor souls became prisoners in their worst nightmares. Sexual assault and excruciating torture became Gacy's twisted pastimes, and when he had indulged his sadistic desires to the fullest, he would snuff out their lives. His chosen methods were asphyxiation and strangulation. Gacy's house became a graveyard concealing the terrible truth beneath its very foundation. The crawl space, hidden from prying eyes, became the final resting place for his unfortunate 26 victims. Their souls were forever trapped within the claustrophobic confines, silenced by Gacy's insatiable hunger for power and control. Meanwhile, three more bodies found their eternal rest elsewhere on his property, while four unfortunate souls were cast into the murky depths of the Dead Plains River. But this sinister tale had a dark history that preceded these heinous crimes. Gacy had a brush with the law before, back in 1968. He was convicted of the sodomy of a teenage boy in Waterloo, Iowa, and was sentenced to a seemingly fitting 10 years behind bars. However, much to the shock of the community, he served only 18 months before walking free once more. In 1972, he claimed his first victim. By the end of 1975, two more innocent lives had been extinguished at his hands. And after his divorce from his second wife in 19. He went on a chilling rampage, claiming the lives of at least 30 more victims. But as fate would have it, the disappearance of a young boy named Robert Peast would become the turning point in Gacy's dark tale. Investigators diligently pursued leads, following the trail that led them straight to Gacy's door. On that fateful day, December 21st, 1978, Gacy's reign of terror came crashing down around him. Gacy stood before the court, facing the consequences of his monstrous acts. The magnitude of his crimes shocked the nation, setting a gruesome record in United States legal history. 2. Jeffrey Dahmer Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer, born on May 21st, 1978, was an American serial killer and sex offender who gained infamy as the Milwaukee Cannibal, or the Milwaukee Monster. Between 1978 and 1991, Dharma committed a series of horrifying crimes, extinguishing victims and dismembering 17 males. Dharma's later crimes involved disturbing elements such as necrophilia, cannibalism, and the preservation of body parts, often the skeletal remains. While he was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, schizotypal personality disorder, and psychotic disorder, Dharma was deemed legally sane during his trial. Dharma's first known murder occurred shortly after his high school graduation in 1978. He picked up a hitchhiker named Stephen Mark Hicks, luring him to his house under the pretense of sharing some drinks. Hicks, who was hitchhiking to a rock concert, agreed to accompany Dharma. Big mistake. Dharma's twisted desires began to surface during their interaction, and although Hicks showed no interest in any advances, Dharma became increasingly fixated on him. Eventually, Dharma bludgeoned Hicks with a 10-pound dumbbell, rendering him unconscious. He then proceeded to strangle Hicks to death and engaged in disturbing acts with the body. Dharma continued his gruesome activities, eventually dismembering Hicks's body in his basement and burying the remains in his backyard. He would later revisit the grave, retrieve the 
remains and dispose of them in different ways, such as dissolving the flesh in acid and crushing the bones. Over the course of his killing spree, Dharma targeted young men, with the majority of his victims being from various ethnic minority backgrounds, including nine who were black. Dharma claimed that the race of his victims was incidental, and it was the body type that attracted his attention. His victims were usually drugged and then killed, by means such as strangulation, bludgeoning, or a combination of methods. In some cases, Dharma attempted to create a submissive state in his victims by drilling holes into their skulls and injecting chemicals or boiling water, which instead unintentionally caused their deaths. Finally, in Wisconsin, Dharma was convicted of 15 out of the 16 homicides he committed and was sentenced to 15 consecutive life terms in prison on February 17, 1992. Later, in Ohio, he received an additional life sentence for a murder committed in 1978. Tragically, on November 28, 1994, Dharma's life came to an end when he was beaten to death by fellow inmate Christopher Scarver at the Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage, Wisconsin. The crimes committed by Jeffrey Dharma shocked the nation with their brutality and sadistic nature. They highlighted the importance of identifying and apprehending serial killers, as well as the need for improved support for victims and their families. 3. Dennis Nilsson If you're familiar with the name, Dennis Nilsson, then you must have gotten chills the moment it was mentioned. Nilsson was indeed a chilling figure in British history, and for those who don't know him, you'd be surprised when you find out the heinous crimes he has committed. Born on November 23, 1945, Nilsson appeared to be an ordinary man, blending into the tapestry of the society he found himself in. However, behind his unassuming exterior lurked a darkness that would shock the nation. Between 1978 and 1983, Nilsson embarked on a horrifying killing spree that would forever stain the streets of London. His victims, mostly young men, were lured into his web of deception, unknowingly entering a realm of unimaginable terror. Nilsson's modus operandi was simple, yet horrifyingly effective. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Nilsson's sinister alter ego emerged. He would invite his unsuspecting victims into his residence, where a sense of safety quickly transformed into a complete nightmare. Strangling or drowning his prey, Nilsson took pleasure in the power he held over their lives, but his crimes didn't end there. Nilsson's irritating desires drove him to commit acts of unspeakable horror. After he was done with his victims and in the shadows of his abode, he would dismember the lifeless bodies, severing any connection they had to humanity. The remains became ghastly trophies, serving as a grotesque testament to his twisted desires. For years, Nilsson operated undetected, his secret buried beneath layers of deception. But karma has a way of coming around when you least expect it. It wasn't long until a blockage in the plumbing system of Nilsson's building unveiled the horrifying truth. The discovery sent shockwaves through the community as the extent of Nilsson's monstrous acts came to light. In 1983, the facade crumbled, and Nielsen's reign of terror came to an abrupt end. As he stood trial, the magnitude of his crimes shook the courtroom. Confessing the heinous acts he had committed, Nielsen tried to escape the full weight of his guilt, pleading diminished responsibility. But justice would not be swayed. Ultimately, Nielsen was found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment. His name is etched in the annals of criminal history, forever associated with darkness and malevolence. This was a man who roamed the streets of London with a secret so sinister that it defies comprehension. His story serves as a haunting reminder that evil can wear the mask of normality, lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce. 4. Michael Swango This is going to be another captivating journey into the intriguing story of a criminal offender, Michael Swango. He is indeed another figure who will leave you both fascinated and perplexed. This man here was born on October 21st, 1964, and even though you might initially think his name is an ordinary name, behind this unassuming facade, lies a tale filled with suspense and mystery. And in a moment, you'll get a load of who exactly it is we're talking about. Picture this. It's October 21st, 1954, in Tacoma, Washington, USA. Michael Swango enters the world seemingly innocent and unassuming. Little did anyone know that this charming individual would later take a sinister path that would make your head spin. Swango, a man with a medical degree and a thing for mischief, began his career in the 1980s. However, there was something fishy about the way his patients were mysteriously departing from this world. It was as if he had a secret recipe for disaster hidden up his sleeve. In 1985, Swango's true colors were revealed when he was convicted of poisoning his colleagues with arsenic at the Ohio State University Hospital. Talk about playing a dangerous game, but wait, there's more. After serving time in prison, you would think Swango had learned his lesson, right? Wrong! Like a cunning fox, he continued to weave his web of deception, hopping from one hospital to another, leaving a trail of complications and chaos wherever he went. It was like a real-life medical thriller. Swango's preferred method of operation was to administer lethal doses of drugs, such as potassium chloride or epinephrine, to his victims. He would often inject these substances into his patients while they were under his care. As a result, 
his victims would experience unexpected medical emergencies, cardiac arrest, or other life-threatening conditions. The plot thickened when Swango was finally apprehended in 1997 and the truth came crashing down. The evidence against him was stacked up like a tower of Lego blocks. He was charged with multiple convictions, sending shockwaves through the medical world. The question on everyone's lips, how many lives had he really taken? In the ultimate twist, Swango was found guilty in 2000, but only for three convictions and one count of fraud. The sentence? Life in prison without the possibility of parole. Justice had prevailed, but the chilling reality remained. The true extent of his dark deeds may forever remain a mystery. Estimates suggest that Swango may have been responsible for the loss of at least 60 patients throughout his twisted career. Can you even fathom the scale of his malevolence? It's like a medical horror movie coming to life. It is also believed that he relied on established hospital protocols for handling deceased patients. This usually involved trans transferring the bodies to the hospital morgue or mortuary for further processing, such as autopsies or preparation for burial, cremation, or should I say, for his twisted ways. 5. The Nithari Criminals Ah yes, the Nithari Criminals, a notorious duo that rocked the city of Noida, India. Their story is one hidden behind the darkness, intrigue, and the pursuit of justice. Our story begins with Moninda Singh Panda, an unsuspecting man whose house in Noida would become the backdrop for a series of chilling crimes. Little did he know that his domestic help, Sarinda Kohli, would unleash a reign of terror that would send shockwaves through the community. Kohli, the cunning accomplice, had a sinister way of luring young women and innocent children to Panda's house. With promises of work or delectable treats, he enticed them into his web of deceit. Once inside, the unimaginable unfolded, leaving a trail of nothing but utter heartbreak and despair. The exact details of the crimes committed by the Nithari criminals are grim and distressing, but in some reports it was stated that the victims were subjected to sexual assault and torture and ultimately lost their lives in tragic circumstances. During Kohli's confession, he stated that he would lure the victims into the house, extinguish them, make love with their lifeless bodies, chop them up, and then dump the remains in the drain at the back of the bungalow. But hold on tight because there's more to this story. As the investigation unraveled, it became clear that Panda was not merely an innocent bystander. Oh no, he was complicit in the heinous deeds happening under his own roof. Though he knew of Kohli's dark actions, he turned a blind eye, failing to report them to the authorities. News of these gruesome crimes soon reached the nation, leaving everyone else all jaw-dropped. The public cried out for justice, demanding answers and questioning the safety of their own communities. The case exposed a deep-rooted issue of police apathy and corruption, as it took far too long for the authorities to take action, despite repeated complaints from the victims' families. The Nithari criminals etched their names in the of India's history as some of the most heinous criminals the nation had ever seen. The magnitude of their acts sent shivers down the spines of all who heard the chilling details. It became a wake-up call, highlighting the urgent need for better safety measures and stricter laws to protect the vulnerable in society. As the dust settled, the duo faced their day of reckoning. In 2006, they were arrested and in 2009, they were convicted and sentenced to the ultimate punishment, capital punishment. The verdict brought some solace to the grieving families, a glimmer of closure in the midst of unimaginable pain. The Nithari criminal's dark chapter may be closed, but their legacy lives on. 6. Andrei Chikatilo Andrei Chikatilo, a.k.a. the Butcher of Rostov, earned the infamous title due to the gruesome nature of his crimes and the city in which he operated. Rostov-on-Don, located in southwestern Russia, served as the perfect hideout for all his horrific acts. Andrei's killings involved mutilation and sexual violence, evoking imagery of a butcher's ruthless precision. These are the chronicles of Andrei, the notorious Soviet criminal who sent shivers down the spines of people in Russia during the 1980s. Born in Ukraine in 1936, Andrei had a troubled upbringing plagued by bullies and the embarrassing curse of chronic bedwetting. Little did anyone know that this troubled soul would unleash a wave of terror upon the unsuspecting masses. After his stint in the Soviet army, where it was stated by the media that his violent tendencies began to surface, Andrei found himself in a teaching position, but beneath that seemingly ordinary look lurked a monster waiting to strike. In 1978, Andrei embarked on a horrifying crime spree that would grip everyone around him and those who heard from afar in fear. His victims, mostly young women and children, fell prey to his twisted allure. With cunning precision, he would lure them away from train stations and other public places, ensnaring them in his web of darkness. Regarding the storage of his victims, Chikatilo would typically leave the bodies at the crime scenes. He sought out remote locations, such as forests, fields, and riverbanks, to commit his heinous acts, because he believed that leaving the bodies in rural areas would reduce the chances of them being discovered quickly. That's pretty messed up, but what else can we expect from a psychotic mind such as his? However,
However, it wasn't just the acts themselves that sent shockwaves through society. It was the complex and calculated nature of his crimes. As Andrei's reign of terror escalated, panic and fear consumed the Soviet Union. But it's completely unavoidable and sad that every predator eventually meets their match. In 1990, Andrei's reign of terror came crashing down when a survivor bravely identified him, leading to his capture. The nation breathed a collective sigh of relief as justice closed in on this embodiment of evil. In 1992, Andrei faced his day in court, where his crimes were laid bare for all to see. The verdict was delivered, sealing his fate and bringing solace to the victims' families. And so, in 1994, Andrei met his ultimate end, facing the firing squad. The chapter of his horrifying saga was finally closed, leaving behind a legacy of darkness. But at least the worst part is over now. 7. Edmund Kemper You know that saying, train up a child in the way he should grow, and when he is old, he will never depart from it. Well, it's bloody damn true, and Edmund here is a living example. Why you ask? From an early age, Kemper's life was marred by adversity. After enduring a horrendous childhood, he suffered cruel maltreatment, both physical and emotional, at the hands of his own mother. I think you know where this is going. It was during these formative years that a disturbing fascination with death took hold. Not only that, the little man also developed a gruesome hobby of extinguishing the lives of small animals, but as he entered his teenage age years, Kemper's disturbed psyche reached a tipping point. At the tender age of 15, he committed his first act of violence, a foreboding sign of insanity. After being diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic, he was confined to a psychiatric hospital where hopes of rehabilitation were anticipated. However, no one knew fate had other plans. Kemper's release from the hospital would unleash a wave of terror upon the unsuspecting populace. In 1972, he embarked on a chilling crime spree that spanned over a year, targeting mostly female college students. He would lure them in through the deceptive front of hitchhiking, but behind the innocent gesture lay a sinister intent, a macabre desire that festered within his tormented soul. After killing his victims, Kemper engaged in various methods to dispose of their bodies. He dismembered their remains, sometimes storing body parts for a period of time. Kemper admitted to engaging in sexual acts with the severed heads of some of his victims, and to conceal his crimes and avoid detection, Kemper used several strategies. He would transport the body parts to remote locations and dispose of them in different areas such as burying them in the mountains or dumping them in ravines. In some instances, he discarded body parts in rivers or even discarded entire bodies in areas where they were likely to remain hidden. The nefarious deeds of Edmund Kemper reached their peak when the lifeless bodies of his own mother and her friend were discovered. Unable to escape the grasp of his own malevolence, Kemper made a shocking decision. He turned himself in to the very authorities who were in pursuit of his blood-stained trail. Justice finally caught up with this remorseless predator, found guilty of all 10 counts against him, Kemper faced the weight of his unforgivable crimes. The gavel fell, sealing his fate with a life sentence behind bars. To this day, he languishes within the walls of the California medical facility, a chilling reminder of the darkest corners of the human psyche. Edmund Kemper's tale continues to captivate the public imagination, captivating authors, filmmakers, and audiences alike. 8. Joseph D'Angelo During the 1970s and 1980s, the Golden State found itself in the grip of a crime wave. Burglaries, violations, and a a host of other offenses plagued the state, striking fear into the hearts of its residents. In July 1981, Sherry Domingo and Gregory Sanchez met their demise in Goleta. Sanchez was shot and beaten up, bludgeoned in the head two dozen times. D'Angelo then bound Domingo, slept with her, and beat her in the head more than 10 times. Unlike other serial killers on this list, D'Angelo didn't stress about storing his victims somewhere. Perhaps it was this carefree attitude that helped investigators catch him with a future technology, as you'll soon see. But for years, investigators tirelessly pursued leads, but the elusive perpetrator slipped through their grasp like a shadow in the night. After assaulting or killing his victims, D'Angelo would typically leave the crime scenes, often taking personal items or valuables as mementos. The brutality of the crimes left victims and their families in a perpetual state of fear and uncertainty, wondering if justice would ever be served. It seemed like an insurmountable task, a puzzle with missing pieces that mocked their efforts. But fate had a surprise in store. A breakthrough arrived in the form of cutting-edge DNA technology, a beacon of hope illuminating the path to justice. Collecting DNA samples from crime scenes, investigators crafted a genealogy profile, a digital roadmap, leading them closer to the truth. And it was within the labyrinthine twists and turns of this genetic puzzle that they found their answer, their key to unlocking the darkness that had shrouded the Golden State for so long. Their search led them 
to a most unexpected figure, Joseph D'Angelo, a former police officer, the very person entrusted with upholding the law, had become its most sinister transgressor. With the weight of irrefutable evidence against him, D'Angelo was apprehended, and his reign of terror was finally exposed to the light of justice. That leaves me to be curious about people's reactions. When they find out. I mean, he's probably one of those cops everyone loves. However, in a stunning turn of events, he confessed, admitting his guilt and laying bare the depths of his depravity. The once mysterious Golden State criminal was brought to his knees, his crimes laid bare for all to see. The victims and their families, long haunted by nightmares of the past, found solace in the closure this monumental breakthrough provided. Decades had passed, but the relentless pursuit of truth had prevailed, ensuring that the scars left by Joseph D'Angelo's actions would heal, though slowly. As we marvel at the triumph of justice, we owe a debt of gratitude to the remarkable advancements in DNA technology. Through the fusion of science and tenacity, the Golden State's darkest enigma was cracked wide open, reminding us that even the most twisted tales can find resolution when human ingenuity clashes with unwavering determination. Nine, Dennis Raider. Known by the chilling moniker BTK, he instilled fear in the hearts of an entire community, leaving an indelible mark on the pages of American crime history. And if you must know, then the nickname BTK stands for Bind, Torture, Kill, a chilling acronym that captures the very essence of Raider's sadistic and brutal crimes. It was a name he bestowed upon himself, a malevolent signature that served as a macabre calling card for his reign of terror. From 1974 to 1991, Raider unleashed a reign of terror like no other. His methodical approach involved stalking his victims, silently slithering through the shadows, and striking when they least expected it. Talk about the main predator. After abducting and murdering his victims, Raider engaged in various methods to dispose of their bodies. He would typically transport the bodies to remote locations, such as abandoned buildings or rural areas, where he would hide them. In some cases, he would bury the bodies, while in others, he left them exposed. No one was safe from his sadistic whims as he reveled in the torment he inflicted upon innocent souls. But Raider's hunger for notoriety knew no bounds. He couldn't resist taunting the authorities and media, a wicked game he played with reckless abandon. Sending haunting letters, he reveled in the details of his gruesome acts, leaving the police and the public in a state of paralyzing terror. For years, his identity remained shrouded in darkness. His crimes and enigma that haunted the collective consciousness of a city. Law enforcement agencies embarked on a relentless pursuit, leaving no stone unturned in their quest to unmask the face of evil. But Raider eluded their grasp, slipping through their fingers like smoke. The frustration mounted, the fear grew, and the community wondered if they would ever find respite from the lurking shadow that plagued their streets. Then, finally, fate intervened. In 2004, Raider's overconfidence proved to be his undoing. He made a grave mistake, a tiny crack in the cover of his malevolence. Unknowingly to him, a floppy disk he sent to the authorities contained a digital breadcrumb, a trace of his nefarious activities. The metadata concealed within linked back to a computer at his church, the very place he sought solace while reveling in his monstrous acts. The noose tightened around Raider's neck, and in 2005, he faced the consequences of his unspeakable crimes. He stood before the court, his guilt undeniable, pleading guilty to the horrors he had wrought upon the innocent. The judge's gavel fell, pronouncing ten consecutive life sentences, forever sealing Raider's fate within the cold, unforgiving walls of a prison cell. Parole was but a distant dream, forever out of reach for the man who had shattered countless lives. The impact of Raider's atrocities rippled through the fabric of Wichita and beyond. Families of the victims were left grappling with a profound sense of loss, forever scarred by the actions of this monster in human form. The Wichita community stood united, their resilience a testament to the strength of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable evil. Dennis Raider's name will forever be etched in infamy, a stark reminder of the depths of human depravity. His reign of terror may have ended, but the scars he left behind continue to serve as a solemn reminder of the resilience and determination required to confront and overcome the darkest aspects of our society. 10. Jack Unterweger Unterweger is another typical example of training a child in the way he should grow. His journey began with a troubled childhood, a turbulent path that led him straight into the clutches of the law. Jack Unterweger, an Austrian journalist, was involved in a series of brutal crimes that inflicted immense suffering upon his victims. His actions were deeply disturbing and left a lasting impact on the communities affected by his reign of terror. Unterweger's crimes primarily targeted street workers, 
whom he lured under the guise of assisting and advocating for their rights. However, instead of offering support and compassion, he subjected these vulnerable individuals to unspeakable acts of violence and brutality. Once he gained the trust of his victims, Unterweger would carry out his heinous acts, which often involved sexual assault, extremities, and ending their lives. His crimes were marked by a callous disregard for human life and a sadistic pleasure in causing pain and suffering. The details of Unterweger's crimes are shocking and distressing. His victims endured unimaginable horrors at his hands, and their lives were tragically cut short due to his vicious actions. Behind prison bars, he discovered solace in writing, penning tales that wove together his own criminal exploits and the complex world of justice. His words resonated with many, casting a glimmer of hope upon his tarnished reputation. The winds of change seemed to blow in his favor as Unterweger's writings gained traction and support. Society embraced the idea of his reformation, leading to his release from prison in 1990. A phoenix rising from the ashes, he was hailed as a reformed character, a beacon of redemption. But alas, appearances can deceive. Beneath the facade of transformation, Unterweger harbored a darkness that refused to be extinguished. Like a predator, donning the mask of a savior, he prowled the streets, preying upon vulnerable souls he claimed to champion. The irony was stark, for the very individuals he professed to assist became his unsuspecting victims. The media circus erupted, and the name Vienna Strangler was etched into the annals of infamy. Justice, however, has a way of catching up with even the most cunning of predators. Unterweger's reign of terror came crashing down, and the weight of his crimes bore heavy upon his shoulders. The courts delivered their verdict condemning him to a life behind bars, forever separated from the world he had so callously manipulated. Yet, the story does not end there. In a final act of defiance, Unterweger took his own life within the confines of his prison cell, a tragic end to a chapter marked by deceit and shattered expectations. His tale serves as a cautionary reminder, a chilling testament to the perils of placing blind faith in the guise of reformation. Old habits die hard, they say, and Unterweger's story echoes that sentiment with a haunting resonance. Conclusion I'm more worried about what the families of the victims had to go through. Hearing the various and ruthless ways their very own was taken from them by men who shouldn't have been given a second chance in life. But it all boils down to justice, and as fate may have it, it will always be served.